In this lesson, we'll be learning about and practicing representing problems involving ratios and rates using tables and graphs, meeting the requirements for TEKS 65A. In fourth grade, you learned about input-output tables. You understood that if there was data in the table, and then you applied a rule to that data, you could generate output data. That your input data, with the rule applied, would generate output data, just as I'm doing here. Well, in sixth grade, we're going to spend time teaching you that input-output tables are one way to show rates and ratios and their relationship. That, in fact, we'll talk about X and Y values, as well as equations. We're going to take what you already know about input-output tables and just take you a little bit further. An input-output table is an excellent way to represent relationships between the two items being compared in rates and ratios. A graph is another excellent tool to use if you want to represent the relationship between the items in a rate or ratio visually. We know, for example, that the x-axis runs horizontally in the graph, and that is the input data represented on the x-axis. We also know that the y-axis runs vertically on our graph, and that it represents the output data. That we can use the origin as a starting point and graph what are called ordered pairs, our x, y ordered pairs and that we can graph their locations here in the coordinate plane, in this case, in quadrant 1. We can use that representation to help us to better see the relationship between the terms compared in a rate or ratio, as well as to make predictions about that rate or ratio. Every week, Joey mows his neighbor's grass. Each time he's paid $10. Represent Joey's earnings in a table and on a graph. So we're representing Joey's earnings. So let's give our table and graph a title. Earnings. All right. We know that he mows. In fact, he mows every week. And when he mows, he's paid. $10. So our input data is all the times he mows. And our output data is all the money he gets when he mows. First he has to mow, then he gets paid. So we can title the input mows and the output money. When he mowed the first time, what did he get? $10. And when he mowed the second time, he got another 10, so now he has 20. And the third time, 10 more. This rate is a multiplicative relationship. We can see that if I take the number of times he's mowed and multiply it by 10, I get the amount of money he's earned at that time. So by the time he mows for the fifth time, he's made a total of $50. The number of times he's mowed times 10 gives me the amount of money he's made. A multiplicative relationship. The rule is times 10. Notice how the rule never changes. When you have a rule in your table, and you always will, that rule must be the same every single line. If it doesn't work, it isn't the rule. We'll talk more later about how Rules will be written as equations. Now, one additional column has been added to your table. You know about input, you know about output, you know about rules, but this last column is now taking your input-output data and writing it 
as ordered pairs. We're going to want to graph the data in the table. In order to do that, I'm going to write the data I already have, not new data, the data I already have as x, y ordered pairs. I put my x data, a comma, and my y data. Notice these are not new numbers. These numbers are coming right out of the input-output columns. Now, when I come to the graph, I know this is the x-axis, the horizontal axis, x. This is the number of times he's mowed. This vertical axis is the y-axis. This is the amount of money he's made. I need to number my number lines. I need to label them. So I start at the origin, and here, the number of times he's mowed goes up by 1. So I'll use a scale of 1 on my axis. The amount of money he gets paid, though, goes by 10s. So I'm going to use a scale of 10 on the number line for my y-axis. It's totally fine, as long as I use that scale for the entire number line. Now I graph. I begin at the origin, right here, 0, 0. I move to 1 on the x-axis first for the first time he mowed, and up on the y-axis for the $10 he received. Back to the origin, to 2 for the second time he mowed, and up to 20 for the money he's made. I keep going back to the origin, x-axis first, y-axis second. And I'm coming out to the number of times he's mowed and up to the amount of money he's made. I can see on this graph, every time I, the number of times I've mowed goes up by 1, the amount of money I made goes up by 10. That makes this a multiplicative relationship. When I connect all my data and draw this arrow, that shows that if I continue to mow, I'm sorry, if Joey continues to mow, Joey will continue to earn more money. So that if I look at the graph, I can see that if Joey mowed a ninth time way out here, I could come up and see how much money he would have had. He would have had made $90 by the time he mowed that ninth time. I can make predictions using my graph. Let's try a second problem. Tamara walks one mile to school and one mile home from school each day. Represent the miles she will walk in a table and on a graph. Again, this is a problem showing the relationship between two items making up a rate. The first item is each day. Each day she walks. So she walks one day, then the next day she walks again and again and again. Each day she's walking one mile to and one mile from school. In our table, we want to put a title. Represent the miles she will walk. So put Tamara walks. Tamara walks. Now, our input data are the days, right? So I would put days. Our output data is the miles. How far will she walk? So for example, I know on the first day, we'll call that Monday, she walks a mile to school and then she walks a mile home from school. So on Monday, that first day, she's walking two miles. So on the second day, Tuesday, how many miles does she walk then? Again, she walks two miles, one to and one from. So two more miles makes a total of four. The third day, another two for a total of six. The fourth day, another two for a total of eight. What's happening to my input data to generate my output data? That's my rule. It looks like I'm multiplying times 2. Each day, I'm walking 2 miles. I'm multiplying the number of the day 
times 2 to get the total number of miles walked so far. So that by the time you get to the end of the week, at the end of the day on Friday, we know that if we multiplied by 2, we would know that she walked 10 miles that entire week. Now, the last thing we need to do is write our XY ordered pairs, X and Y. It's not new data. This is the data we already have in our table. So on the first day, it's 2 miles. By the second day, she's now walked four miles. By the third day, she's walked six. The fourth day, she's walked eight. And by the fifth day, come the end of Friday, she's walked a total of 10 miles. This table represents the rate at which she's walking. The days and the miles. The days will be represented on our x-axis, days. While the number of miles, the output data, will be represented on the y-axis, the miles. Now, once again, I need to label my axis, my number lines, right? I start here at 0 for the origin, and then the number of days by 1s, because she's just going one day at a time. I could label my y-axis by 2, because she's walking 2 miles each day. And so I'll use a scale of 2. This way I know I can fit my data easily in the graph. I start at the origin now to graph my data. I begin here at the origin. On the first day, so I move along the x-axis first to 1 and up to 2 for the 2 miles she walked that day. I go back to the origin. Second day, 4 miles. Third day, 6 miles. Fourth day, 8 miles. Fifth day, 10 miles. And our table is done. But let me ask you a question. Do you think you could predict how many miles she would have walked by the end of the sixth day? If you said 12, you got it. This is a multiplicative relationship. We are multiplying the number of the day by 2 to find out how many total miles she's walked by that time. Our line runs through the origin and has an arrow at the end to represent how she's going to continue to walk more and more miles each and every day. Let's go ahead and wrap up the lesson. In this lesson, I showed you how we can represent mathematical and real-world problems in a table and on a graph. That, in fact, you can use what you already know about input-output tables in order to generate a visual representation of the relationship in a ratio or rate. And that you can then make predictions based upon that. That by graphing the data, we can see how that data behaves, what that relationship looks like. So that, for example, if we were to graph this data, it would graph like this. And that I would run a line from the origin through my data to show that as long as my input continued to rise, my output would rise by 3 a multiplicative relationship. Tables and graphs are an excellent way to visually represent the relationship in a ratio or rate.